Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to episode three, part two of the video build series where we are putting together the beautiful 84 inch Lavochkin LA7 by CY model. In part one, we prepared the ailerons and flaps. And in this part, we are going to be doing the hinges. So that includes the pin style hinges, as well as the flat plastic CA style hinges that the flaps use. After that, we'll do all the turnbuckles, the linkages, install the servos, and then the flaps and ailerons will be done. So without any further ado, let's head over to the bench and get to work. All right, we are going to be using the Hi-Tech D45MW, one of my favorite general purpose all around servos, digital, really happy with these, programmable. Um, so this is what I use for my general servo. So let's get these going. And normally you have to put these grommets in, in case you haven't seen this little trick before, we're just gonna stack those on a little driver and shove those in here. A little bit easier on your thumbs and forefingers doing it this way. And then we're ready to go mount this servo. So we have that servo block, so let's go ahead and do the same thing. We're gonna drill those holes and establish these threads with the servo screws, and then we'll get some, we'll get some ultra thin CA to go and really establish those threads before we mount the servo for real. Once we're done with this step, we can set this aside for a while. When this glue dries, maybe the next day, we can go ahead and mount the servo. All right, it's time to do these pin hinges. The first step we always want to do, we want to get a little piece of sandpaper and just take, just, just sand it a little bit. We don't want to take too much off. We don't want to uh, make the circumference any smaller. We just want to create some rough edges just to create some additional surface area for the glue to stick to. Some of that roughness helps the glue stick. So on each of the pin hinges, we'll just go around, take a few swipes and next, we will get some alcohol out and isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. We'll put this in a little container and throw the hinges in here, shake it around. We wanna clean those hinges, number one, from what we just sanded. So there's some, some debris from the sanding we just did, but also to release any injection molding uh, release agents or something. Just get these nice and clean because we need this, uh, the epoxy to adhere to these pin hinges. The next step, some people use oil. I, like I said, I have a, a, a jar of Vaseline there in the background that I've had for a long time. Uh, so I just get a toothpick and dab some Vaseline around the joints. And with these Robart hinges, um, you could just, it's pretty easy to just fill all the gaps in the hinges. I am, I have a big bag of these hinges. Uh, so whenever I get a model like this, I don't use the ones that come with the factory uh, and just replace them with the Robarts. And once I get the Vaseline in there, you see I got my little blowtorch. Just melt that just very quick. You saw that was only about a second. You then bend the hinge to work that Vaseline in there and then you have a nice barrier for any glue that you don't want to get in there. Just like with the control horns, we're going to coat the bottom half of one of the sides of the pin hinges because again, when we, when you see how we're going to insert these, uh, it's going to really cover the whole side. So you really only need to cover the bottom half-ish of these pin hinges. So go ahead and apply the epoxy to the hinges for the aileron. And then we will get another small toothpick roll a little dab of epoxy in there, and then we're going to insert into each one of these holes and really coat the hole inside of the hole. So insert, get in there, be careful, because you don't wanna, you don't wanna make a mess, but you can see me kind of rotating it. We're coating the hole inside of these holes, and I usually go through all four holes and then do it again really quick, just add a little bit more before we insert the pin hinges. So now we take the pin hinges and on this side, we have the luxury when we insert it from this side, we can rotate as we're inserting. That's just going to help the epoxy coat all the sides, coat the pin as it's going in and go from there. So you'll see, this is a little better shot. You'll be able to see me kind of rotate it as we insert it. Now, obviously you're not going to be able to rotate the pin 
when you're actually attaching the aileron on the other side, but at least on this side, we can rotate and really get a nice coating of epoxy. And when you're all done, you can get a little Q-tip and go around the edges if you made any mess whatsoever. This is the time to maybe wet that Q-tip with some um, rubbing alcohol and clean up any excess that came out. So now we can take the aileron and go ahead and insert it. Now you notice I didn't put glue on the other side of the pin hinges. I like to do this one step at a time. So I am doing this portion because once you attach the aileron, you can then work it like you see me doing right here. And that makes sure that the pin hinges are all aligned perfectly. They're going to kind of snap into alignment right here. So now it's time we've let these dry dry enough at least to go ahead and put glue on the other side so now we will coat again just the bottom side of those hinges and we will do the same thing with the aileron get the small toothpick out put a little dollop of epoxy in there and coat each hole inside the aileron and prepare to go ahead and insert it on And of course, after it's on, make sure you get your deflection and you can tape, tape it up and you're ready to go. Let that sit uh, for you know an hour or two or overnight if you'd like. The flap is slightly different. We have these flat plastic CA style hinges, um, but it's the same concept. We're gonna put those in there and we'll attach the, the flap just like this. And these hinges have these little holes um, on both sides and what you saw me doing there I was making sure as I was inserting Those hinges that I was getting epoxy into each of those holes because that's really where that strength is is that it can create a bond uh, The epoxy can create a bond between both pieces of the the balsa above and the balsa below through the hole in these hinges and so I was just making sure that There was enough epoxy you saw me go through with a little q-tip to clean out anything access and we're good to go on the flap. All right, everything's dry and now it's time. We've mounted the servos and we got the hardware, we got the push rods and actually the turnbuckles. I'm using all the hardware that came uh, with the kit for this portion, but let's go ahead, run those servo extensions. These, I don't have the exact distances that we need, so I always have about four to six really long extensions that I keep in the shop just for building because it's temporary. And then after I get the wing on and I start working on the fuse, I'll be able to really measure and see how long of an extension I need. But we'll start with the aileron. Go ahead and get that in there. And now that our glue has dried on these mounting holes, we can go ahead and mount with the servo mounting screws. And as I'm mounting this, I wanted to talk about the push rod. Uh, so again, these are turnbuckles. So there's, there's actually four ball links of one type and four of another. And so I just made sure that the backwards ball link on the turnbuckle was the one with a little hole in it. And so what I found with my measurements, a good place to start for the total length of this push rod from the end of one ball link to the end of the other is around 128 and a half or 129 millimeters. And that's a good place to start. And also, if you notice, I am using the second hole down, not the, not the hole that appears to be right over the hinge line, because the way this is hinged, the, the physical line you see is not really the hinge line. It's actually in front of that. And as, I, as I've measured, I've seen that that bottom hole is actually more over that hinge line. So that 128 and a half to 129 millimeter length is for push rod using the bottom hole on the control horn. 
Now, as we mount the flap servo, uh, same thing, you get a turnbuckle, and I found a good starting point, uh, complete length of that push rod is around 114 millimeters. So just use that as a guidance, maybe start off with there and see where you wanna go. Again, the flap is probably better for better geometry to use that bottom hole on the control horn. All right, so now we did the landing gear, we did the ailerons, we did the flaps, mounted everything. Thanks for tuning in, and we will be back soon for episode number four of the build series of this beautiful Levochkin LA7. Talk to you soon. <laughs>